Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on creating an animated sun study diagram in Rhino and Photoshop. Now we're going to be working with this 3D model that I've downloaded from Digimaps and imported into Rhino and I've also set up a 2D line drawing diagram of my site which I'm working on and the kind of sun path showing where the sun would be moving across the sky on this site. Now both of the processes of setting up this 3D drawing in Illustrator and importing this 3D model in from Digimaps into Rhino are on my previous videos on my channel and I'll put the links in the description for those if you haven't watched them previously. Now I've set up a named view for this file which matches my Illustrator file and we're going to start by rendering out my animated shadow study on the site here. Now if you go to render and in your render properties we first need to make sure that we just have the sun set up with this tick box here in our file and at the moment I've located my sun just in London which is where my site is based and we've kind of set it to the first time which is four o'clock. Now we're not actually going to be rendering it out from here we're going to be using Rhino's built-in animation settings to render out our sun study at set increments during the day and I'm going to do them an hour long increments so it renders out at from four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock all the way through to eight o'clock in the evening in my day here. So we're not going to render from this part here. We're going to make sure the resolution and quality is set so we've got to set it to the viewport and we've got our DPI and quality set there and once that's done we can hit OK and that's fine. Now we're actually going to render it then using the animation tools and to find the animation tools in Rhino usually they're not sort of on your regular toolbar. We have to go into tools and the toolbar layout and if we set on default on your files here, you'll see this little animation toolbar and you just want to tick that box there. And when you do, you'll get this animation toolbar come up on your panel and it should just drop into your file like this. And within this, we've got in our animation, we can open this out and we have a sun study animation and that's the one we're going to be using for this particular task here. So I'm just going to pull out the bar there and we're going to select the sun study animation. If we left click on that, it will set up a one day sun study, which is what we want to do for this particular task. Now, our latitude and longitude is where our model is placed in the world. And I've already set mine to London and you can see it's kind of dropped on the UK there, but you can set it to wherever your project is based and it will match the sun in that area. So that's fine. Now, keep the north angle as it is. And we want to set the date to whatever date you want. I've got a date in June at this point and we want to set a start time and an end time. So I'm doing mine from four in the morning and let's do it to nine o'clock at night. And we'll set our minutes between our frame as 60. So it's an hour long increments between. So we're gonna go from four, five, six, all the way through to nine o'clock. And we want to set our file type to JPEG and our capture method to render full, which will mean it will render out each of the shadows in each of those stages of the animation. Make sure your viewport is set to the one you set it to, and I've got mine, which is my diagram 3D. And we can animation name is fine as animation now, so that's good. So once you've set it up and that's set now, all we need to do is record our animation. And to do that, we need to hit this record button there, the big red record button in your animation tab. If I hit record, it will come up and ask me exactly where I want to save my thing. If um, you want your animation saved somewhere else, you can click on that and you can choose a new file to do that. And once we've done that, we're not going to run the animation while it goes because it's just a sun study. So we won't see any object changes. It's just the lighting that's changed. And once you're ready for that, just press enter to start the recording. And you'll see that what it will do is it will open up the render file for each part of the stage of the animation and it will render out a new layer for each of those. Now don't worry too much about the fact that this is coming up as a kind of black render at the moment, it's quite contrasty because we can play around with that in Photoshop and I'm going to tweak the colours and the lighting in there to work better with my Photoshop file once we bring it in. So as long as we've got a strong shadow and a kind of area that shows the main buildings, that's fine for this particular task. So we're just going to let that render through and it will just go through each of those hours rendering and saving each one to my destination folder that I've selected. And depending on how many you've chosen, what increment you've got your shadows on, what quality settings you have it on, that might be a longer or shorter process in there. So you can see mine's coming to the end of this particular animation and we're nearly at the final stage. 
So we're going through the last couple of hours. And once we've done this, we're going to import all these frames into Photoshop to start to animate and pull together. So I think this is the last frame here. And now we can open up Photoshop and start to work in and open up these frames in there. So once it's finished, you'll see it drops back to your main menu. And if we go into our files, you'll see now we have this kind of 17 files of animation. I think this last one here, the sun had set by that point. So I'm going to delete that one so we don't have it. So we've got our kind of 0 to 16 there, which we're going to be working with. Now, as well as that, we also want to export our layer for our kind of sun path drawing from Illustrator. Now I'm going to want to, as my shadows move, I actually want to sort of move this sun object across the sky here so we can almost trace its path um, on this diagram here. So what I'm going to do is with this, just switch this round so it just shows up as a kind of white fill for the first part. And we're going to save this out just by going File, Export, Export As. Make sure we're using the artboard so it crops the image down and we'll just save it as Site 3D. There. And just replace my previous ones. And then what I'm also going to do is we're going to just switch that back so it's a bright yellow sun. And what I want is when my shadows move, we also want to move the sun across the sky. So I'm going to actually isolate my sun layer here and I'm just going to copy and paste in place this on a new layer and hide my other layers there. So we've just got our sun and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to export, export as, and just call this sun. So what we will have now is you'll see we've got our single sun layer and we've got our site layer there. So now we've got all our key pieces of our animation. We now need to rebuild this up in Photoshop. So let's open up Photoshop start to do that process. We're now going to import our shadow layers into Photoshop and we're going to import them in so they simultaneously enter a single file. To do that we're going to go to File, Scripts and Load Files into Stack. From this tab, it opens up here, we can select Browse and we can find our animated shadow layers there. Select OK and this will bring them all in simultaneously into one Photoshop file and you'll see them just loading in there. They always keep in the same order as well because when we animate the sun study it will animate them with numbers sequentially in the frames. Now once these are brought in we need to open up the timeline layer that you can see at the bottom of my frame here. Now by default this timeline window won't be open in your Photoshop file so to open this up we can go to window timeline and that will bring it up there and I quite like to dock it at the bottom of my Photoshop file like this. With that docked we can create frame animation and this will be the start of our frame animation for our sun study there. Now before I turn this into an animated sun study we first need to make this adjustable so we can start to overlay it onto our um, our base layer that we've made in Illustrator already. We want the shadows to be quite transparent and to be sort of overlaid onto this base image. So in order to do that, we're first going to select all the frames, put them to a multiply blending mode and put the fill down to about 50% there. And you can see there that they're now overlaying on top of one another. So that will work when we start to bring in that other layer and overlay these shadows onto that. Now with that set, we can then click on the right hand corner of our timeline dock here and select make frames from layers and this will make each of these layers into a new frame and if we hit the play button at the bottom you can see there that this is now animating those so these are kind of moving through the hours of our frame animation now what might happen which has happened in mine is it's actually playing backwards at the moment so we're working backwards from frame 16 to 0 in order to reverse these frames, we can just select all the frames, go back to the top right hand corner and select reverse frames and that will just flip them so they'll now be going in the opposite direction, as you can see there. So with that now set, we're going to select these frames, put them in a folder and just call this animation there. And we're now going to bring in our base layer and drag and drop it onto the board like so. 
the first thing we need to do is we need to line this up with the shadows. So what I like to do is I like to put the fill to about 50% and we'll zoom in and we'll just line up the kind of key corner of one building with the key corner on our other image like so. With that lined up, if we hit Control T to transform the image, select this crosshair in the center. If you don't see this crosshair immediately, you'll need to tick on this tick box in the top left hand corner and that will turn it on. With that on, we can drag this to that key point that we've matched up between our two images, like so. And then holding down the Alt key and taking one of the corners, we can then transform this object and scale it up from that point outwards so that we can then, I'm just looking at the building on the right hand side and I can line that up to match so my two images match like so. And with that lined up, we can then up the fill back up to 100% there. Now with it lined up, I'm then going to turn the blending mode of this file and we'll just select frame one and turn this to a multiply blending mode there. Now it seems that one of my frames was slightly off there, which is then kind of reset the rest of them. So I'm just going to go through and work out which frame it is. And I think it's this frame 16 here. So we'll just make sure that that's on a multiply as well. And it also appears that one of my frames, my 16th and 17th frame, for some reason has shifted slightly. So if your file does this, don't worry, because we can move. I'm going to move this image to match up with my previous files there. So that aligns. And we'll just go through one at a time. Make sure this is aligned. And just go through each frame to check the alignment of this as well. It's aligned correctly and then it seems to be frame 16 isn't aligning so I'm just going to make sure that my shadow layer is lining up correctly there and sometimes this might slip off if you accidentally knock the shadows so you can just go back on a frame by frame basis and just realign these if needs be so I think we have it there so let's check and yes, that's now all correctly aligning. So if you're getting any alignment issues, just go into each frame and just align the images so they're back and shifted back to their correct place. Now with those correctly aligned, I'm also gonna just slow down the timing of these a bit because we're going quite quickly at the moment. So in order to do that, if you select all the frames simultaneously, just by selecting one, holding the shift key and selecting the 17th, we can then go to this time option below the frame and I'm going to just set this for half a second and you'll see if I play that now it will be a lot slower. Now it might be that you want it a bit quicker than this or a bit faster so we can always change that and you can just do the same thing. Let's have a look at kind of 0.2 and see how quick that is. So I think that's quite a nice speed for this particular animation. It's not too quick but we can see each of the stages of our sun study there. Now with that done what I'm also going to do is at the moment our shadows are quite dark and they're making the whole building sort of in shade and shadow. So I'm going to brighten these up a little bit just to make the shadow more dark but the building slightly lighter. And to do that we're going to use the levels tool. So if we go to the adjustment layer, select the levels and make sure it sits below my site layer but on top of my animation. And we're just going to drag the right hand side of the levels to the left and you'll see there that the buildings are brightening up but the shadows are remaining dark and if we just have a look and see how that affects the rest of the animation you can now see that my buildings are a lot lighter but my shadows are still quite strong so we can still see the effects of those now for the final tweaks on this animation i'm also going to change the shadow color to a kind of shade of blue personally i quite like taking them away from a very dark grey shadow and if you look at shadows from the sun most of the time they'll be slightly tinted blue and to do this I use the hue saturation layer select colorize move the hue up to a blue tone there up the saturation up slightly and up the lightness 
and then we can just tweak this until we get the sort of right tone we're looking for. You might need to play around with the saturation and the lightness until you're sort of getting it correct. And once that's set, we can test and see. And I think, yes, I think that I'm happy with that now. Now, as a final touch for this, I've also got my dotted line here indicating the path of the sun. And I'd quite like to animate my sun moving with the shadows. In order to do this, I also exported out from my file this lone sun piece. And I'm just going to drag and drop this in as well. And we're going to align this up to my base layer below. Like so. With that aligned, we're then going to isolate the sun from this image. And I'm just going to use the magic wand tool to select the sun, copy it, and then go edit and paste it in place or control V there just to drop it back in on its own layer. Now, to set this sun so it moves across the sky matching our shadows, we'll align it with our first one. It might be that you want to make this a bit bigger or smaller. We're just going to make it slightly larger for this example here. And then on each frame, what we're going to do is we're going to start with frame one, see where the sun is sitting, which is kind of roughly in the position I have now. We'll move to frame two. We're going to make a copy, just holding the Alt key, copying the sun and moving that roughly into where its position would be. And I'm just going to do that for each frame, making a copy, moving the sun into its rough location where I need it. And moving on as well. And I'm going to pause the video and just go through and quickly do that to all of the frames. Now once you've done that you'll end up with all these copies of the sun and if I go through each layer you'll see that we've got some duplicates and some areas where we've got a couple of suns kind of where they shouldn't be. In order to tidy that up if we just go layer by layer and just turn off each of the layers that aren't important for that particular one and then move to the next layer and then turn on the ones we do need. And we'll just go through layer by layer until we have the correct layers set. And it can be sort of quite, quite a slow process, this. But once you've kind of got to the point, you'll end up with a full animation. Now just pause the video and set this up. And once you're finished, it should look something like this with the sun moving in relation to the shadows. Now you see my arrow wasn't quite long enough for this, so it's slightly extended over there, but you can always go back and change that in your original image and re-import it into Photoshop. So from that point on, you might want to then just crop down your image down to the correct scale so everything lines up. And from there, depending on where you're posting this, you can either export it out as a GIF or as a video file as well. So we could just go export and render video there. And I usually render it out as an MP4 video, just an MP4 and save that out. And that will save that as a video file. So that was just a quick tutorial on how to create a simple shadow sun study animation in Photoshop using a rendered shadow layer from Rhino and an Illustrator drawing set up in Illustrator but from that original Rhino model. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and if you want to watch any other tutorials on setting up Digimaps information, setting up 2D or 3D drawings within Rhino or setting up images in Photoshop, please check out the other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.